Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. And I'm Caleb Oaks. Caleb, uh, for this episode, we just wanted to continue defining terms that we use all the time in this podcast that uh, a lot of our listeners will know about, but some may not, uh, and we think it'll be useful to them. Yeah, let's do it. All right. (laughs) All right. There's a term we use now and then because we used to build all of our data warehouses this way for a decade or more. which is Kimball style data warehouse, mm-hmm. Ralph Kimball. So tell us about what does it mean when someone says Kimball style? So Kimball is kind of the pioneer behind like facts and dimensions, like that type of thinking, right? So um, what that means is there's another term that we should have on the list, but we need to put on there dimensional modeling. So, yeah. And when, when we refer to something as dimensional model, it's You have dimensions, you have facts, which we'll get into in a second. Um, But it's essentially a way of of organizing your data, doing that denormalization of pulling tables together into a format that Kimball kind of created, right? And it's sort of a a standard that helps you get to the right level of denormalization for efficient efficiency in terms of operations but also efficiency for users to be able to understand it mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. uh, you talked about fact and dimension tables um, a fact table would be one that holds what we would think of as a transaction like a sales transaction mm-hmm. a dimension table would be a thing that holds descriptors for that transaction so the sales transaction might have a customer ID associated with it, and then you might have a dimension table that has all of the customer data in it. Right. Still denormalized. You bring all the address and all of that in there, but you you don't want to have to repeat all of that data. Even though you're denormalizing, you don't want to repeat all of it in the transaction, the fact, the fact table. Right, right, Can exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the, one of the main reasons why you wouldn't want to do that is – that you might have more than one fact table, right? So you just want to have your customer ID there so you can use in your visualization tool, you can click on like, okay, I just want to see this customer and see information from both yeah. of those fact tables, so both transactional tables, um, without having to choose a customer in table A and a customer in table B. Right? Okay, so that just made me think of a definition we didn't write down, but so, uh, so a dimensional model is basically a model that has these facts and um, let's see, let's start again. So uh, what's a dimensional model? <laughs> <laughs> so a dimensional model, um, the easiest way I think about it is there are dimensions, so dimensional dimensions, yeah. and then facts. So dimensional model is you've, you've essentially taken, you've got a fact table and multiple dimensions kind of surrounding your fact table. Yeah, okay. All right, so next thing, let's talk about what is a data model. I mean, I, I think we've talked about a dimensional model, but what is a model? Yeah, good, that's a good question. So that actually makes me think of something that's further separated, but these things are kind of used interchangeably, so I don't think it's worth going into the, the specifics of the differences. So um, if we just talk about a data model, um, that is typically – it's set up in a way that shows you the relationships between tables. So as you were describing your transaction with a customer on it, um, and like you'd have your customer ID in your fact table, but then it's connected to your customer table. There's a, something else we'll talk about in a second called a relationship that pulls that, that makes that connection. Right. So you can like, right. Do analysis across the two. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So, um, that is what we would refer to as a data model is like, a way of organizing that data and having the re- relationships defined between the tables uh, so you can actually do some analysis. So, yeah. so model is the same as a data model. Yeah. And it might be dimensional, might not. Yeah, right, right, okay. exactly. Te- technically, you could have a single table data model. Right, right. yeah, okay. All right, um, so what's a relationship then? Yeah, so that relationship is really what just what I described, where you have a customer table, you have a transaction table, you have a customer ID on your transaction table, and then in your customer table, you have a customer ID, and there's a connection, essentially a join between the two tables, and we would call that a relationship. Yeah, okay. And so that allows the the system, the SQL system, to know how to connect these tables 
in exactly. a good way. Right. Okay. All right. So that leads me to then what is a star schema, which is basically a, a type of a model. Yep. Yep. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm realizing we're going to go in circles like, here. This is a, so a star schema. Star schema. Well, I think the best way to talk about a star schema is to talk about a star schema and a snowflake schema together. Yeah, okay, good. So you've got – let's just picture this. So you have a transaction table and you have a customer table and then maybe you have a date table, right? Um, now, you, you probably have a couple other tables. But if you have your transaction table in the middle of your screen – and you've got a customer table kind of up and to the right. You've got your date table up and to the left. And then maybe you have a couple. There's like an item table down to the right and maybe something else down to the left. It starts to start to kind of look like a star, right? right. So you've got your single fact table and you've kind of got your prongs of your star um, as all, your dimensions. All the dimensions, yeah. Right. So as soon as you add another table, let's say you had like a, um, like a customer. Let's use, use item. the address. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so good. So you've got your address table, and let's say you just connect it to your customer table. So you've got a customer ID on your address, or maybe an address ID on your customer yes. table, and it connects to your address table. Now you're kind of two steps removed from your transaction table. As soon as you do that, that's what's called a snowflake. So now yeah. you're now you're working off a snowflake model, not a star schema model. Yeah, okay, and calling back to an earlier definition, a star schema model is the one that's very denormalized. We've pulled all the data in from all the tables to a few that are fitting into this dimensional model. Um, and a snowflake schema is one that's normalized, meaning we're breaking the data up into lots of different tables. Right, exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Okay, so we've been talking about models. Um, in our podcast the last few weeks, we've talked a lot about semantic layers and mm -hmm. semantic models. Yep. Is there any difference between those, and what does that mean? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best way I can describe that semantic model versus like a data model is, um, at least in our world, I think they are very basically the same thing. However, I would call the semantic model, at least in our architecture, um, really more the queries and the tables that you actually that are denormalized before they actually hit your like your tool where you're going to actually create real relationships between tables. A star schema. Right, right. So like when you have a relationship between customer and a, a transaction table, that is done. You make that relationship actually work like real time in a tool like Power BI inside of Power BI. Right. So we would typically call the model something that's in Power BI. The semantic layer, though, is something that is consumed by Power BI. So you would consume your semantic layer with Power BI and then build the model inside of Power BI by creating relationships. Okay. So the semantic layer or semantic model, which makes it confusing to use model again, but is just that layer on top of a data lake mm -hmm. that allows Power BI to sort of see a table view of the data that's sitting in the data lake. Right. Then within... Power BI, you're going to actually create your reporting data model, your star schema. Well said. Okay. I hope that made sense. That's, <laughs> <laughs> it seems confusing. While we're on that, uh, we probably should have covered this earlier. What's a view? So a view, it stores code, stores your T-SQL code that selects data from a table. Yeah. Right? So Power BI allows you to just grab data straight from a table, but essentially all that's doing is it's generating a SQL query against that table, right? So a view is basically you're just taking out that automation from Power BI, which which you want to do um, because you might want to do other things than what Power BI generates when you're pulling data from that database. So a view is just stored, stored SQL. It's sort of an in-between the raw tables and where you're going to go with the reporting data model, you just have a shortcut, which is this stored SQL that creates a view. Looks like a table, mm -hmm. but it's not a physical table. Yeah. Th but, th but then when you get to Data Lake, the whole semantic layer is really views, yeah. sort right. of. I mean, I, we don't refer to them that way. Yeah. I mean, technically they are, right? They yeah. for sure are. I mean, really, it's a view of, it's a view of some underlying data. Right? Yeah. So we've always written views on top of like even our – 
denormalized data warehouse tables. It just keeps you nice and flexible. So yeah. going to like a data lake model with a semantic layer on top, it's really a, the exact same right. thought process. Um, yeah, and they're both views. Yeah, yeah. So in our old data warehouses sitting on SQL Server, we'd have raw tables. We would create a whole layer of views, reporting views, and we're doing the same thing in a data lake, but we're calling that now a semantic layer, Yeah, the views. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Good. Okay. I think we're out of time. So I think we'll wrap this for now, and we'll come back and, uh, and do another episode of this if people find it useful. Uh,